achieve affordable housing in King County, Washington? Wow, Stan, uh, that's a great question. I mean, you're looking at an environment uh, that we call a hot market um, in the United States, and and there's so many people migrating here, and, and we're experiencing huge amounts of displacement. People who can't afford to live here anymore being pushed out further and further, compounded with the suburbanization of poverty in South King County. Huge issues that we're facing. How do we achieve it? We've got to think differently. We're going to have to embrace density, but density with affordability. And that's the ability uh, for us to find ways of creating enough housing so that everyone can have a, a quality place to live. There's a lot of jobs here. There are. And because there's a lot of jobs, people come here. Yep. But there are a lot of these jobs pay really, really well. They do. Um, but it's not universal in all job categories. And so you do have a number of people who are working hard every day, sometimes two or three jobs. And uh, they're still struggling because the, the cost of housing has increased so significantly. Um, I think we're at a, a housing wage right now in King County of $25, $27 an hour. That's how much you would need to make to be able to afford a two bedroom home. And uh, you know, $15 an hour, we think we're getting there, it's still a ways away. It sounds like a problem that can't be solved. We certainly don't want to go there. Um, well, I, I mean, I, I know, but, but we're talking about great jobs, people making a lot of money, people able to afford more and more houses. Where, where I live, they tear down houses that have been there for, gosh, a long time, 25 yes. years. Correct. And then they build a house that's twice that size and you get the same number of people living in it. And that is why we're pushing really hard for policies and practices that can help. So when we're doing development going forward, folks in Seattle, for example, are going to be required to either build affordable housing with those new developments or pay a fee that will go into a trust fund so that we can allocate those resources out to build affordable housing. So we're trying to tie the need for affordability with all development going forward. Yeah, I've got to tell you what some people hear when they hear the words affordable housing. They hear a future slum. There is no doubt about those concerns. And uh, Stan, you may recall, I spent 24 years working with Habitat for Humanity around uh, the United States here locally and, and around the globe. And we do have concerns about how we develop and what we create out of that. Uh, to be quite honest with you, we're quite smart now about what we're doing when we're building affordable housing. And people should check those uh, the stereotypes and stigmas and try to really see what are we doing when we're producing housing today because it's a it's a holistic approach. We see housing as a verb, not a noun. And in that in, in that instance, housing's a platform so that families can be stable and all other things can happen. Seattle is a sanctuary city. As a sanctuary city, uh, people from lots of different parts of the world come here. Yes. Um, and they don't necessarily have jobs. So how can all of these interests coexist. So this is uh, one of those real painful challenges we're facing right now as it relates to the immigrant and refugee population. Those organizations, those members of Global Washington and others who are facing those realities day to day are almost giving up on Seattle as an opportunity to find housing and putting most of their energies into South King County, even further south than that. We are going to do a forum um, early on in 2017 on that very issue to try to figure out what else can we do. It's complicated. You know, the job issue, the, the wage issues, the stability issues, and even family-sized housing. A lot of what we're producing in Seattle today is not family-sized housing. It's one-bedroom studio apartments, and you may have seen in the Seattle Times even smaller uh, Yeah, apartments. a parking lot size apartment. Thank you. Yes. Uh, so that's not... Is that the answer to our affordable housing problem, is parking lot size apartments? We struggle with that. What is a quality home? Um, you know, what is a quality space? I think what we're learning in Seattle and other hot markets around the country is that we're gonna have to be open to a wide variety of product types. 
And we ended up last year in Seattle with the housing affordability and livability agenda coming out with 65 recommendations. Mm -hmm. We're highly criticized. People said you should have six, you should have 10. Who's nuts to have 65 recommendations? The truth is we're gonna to have to attack this issue from every possible angle. Where a lot of people are is that they are very, very happy to have affordable housing built, just not next to them. Oh boy. I'm not gonna ask you any easy questions because this is a very tough topic that you've gotten onto. Yeah, so, um, you know, we used to talk a lot about NIMBYs, right? Not in mm -hmm. my backyard. Yeah. And now there's a counteractive movement out there called YIMBYs, yes, in my backyard. Um, I have a deep respect for people who have set down roots, who own maybe for generations a home. And uh, it's their neighborhood, it's their place. The other side of it is, is that we need to be a community. And as a global community, the world has changed dramatically. And um, you heard it this morning in one of the plenary sessions, uh, urban migration. Um, people are facing the need to find a, a new community to be part of. Our mayor here in Seattle and others have clearly said, we don't want to put up walls. And so uh, we're gonna all have to work through our fears of change, our issues with um, what that means for us. And um, Yeah, but our tents along uh, I-5 or I-90, is that the solution? Absolutely not. We shouldn't even tolerate that. Um, and our efforts to figure out what other relief type efforts can we come up with that are more dignified are advancing, not nearly at the pace we need to. Mm -hmm. We've got so many mitigating issues going on with people dealing with opiate addictions, mental illness. I mean, we're 47th in the nation in Washington in terms of mental health beds available. Bad 47th. Whoa. So, you know, you look at this holistically and, and you got to go upstream. And we've got to change a lot of systems and we've got to come at this from a much different perspective. Changing systems. I mean, that's what the entire national uh, election was about, and whether you liked it or whether you don't, and certainly there's, uh, there's good and bad points on all sides, um, change is not easy. When you, not. Cha when you change systems, people's economics aren't the same. They're not. And um, even our new president is going to have to learn this. The uh, discussions taking place already today about lowering corporate tax rates have all of the tax credit investors that invest in affordable housing through the low-income housing tax credit program saying, hey, wait a minute, we are gonna reevaluate whether we need to invest. So a lot of our projects in the pipeline are, are being stalled, even today, before uh, we have an inauguration. And so the implications of every action um, are gonna permeate and people are gonna to have to be smart and wise. And yes, change is gonna to have to happen. Um, we can try to fight it as much as we want, but uh, it's a different world. The Housing Development Consortium, what, do you guys have solutions? Most of what our efforts are uh, focus around policy and advocacy. We're either out there trying to garner and marshal more resources for the production and mm -hmm. preservation of affordable housing. We're working deeply in South King County on healthy housing issues, trying to get code enforcement, rental inspection programs. For many people of color who migrated there, they're living in unhealthy conditions. We shouldn't tolerate that even no, here. absolutely not. Um, and, and then in Seattle, uh, we just renewed the Seattle housing levy, doubled that. We're busy working on uh, the mandatory inclusionary pieces so that we require performance of affordable housing. All of that is, is a gamut of what we do. And then like Global Washington, we're, we're a sector that seeks to build leadership and train people and support our members. When I was a kid, we called it white flight. Now it's wealth flight. Yeah. And we've seen this right here in King County. So much of, of wealth has moved from Seattle to East King County. Uh, and I just can't see East King County embracing um, affordable housing. So we spend a lot of time advocating and working on that arena as well. We do have the Arch Housing Trust Fund on the east side that does provide uh, those municipalities a way to fund affordable housing. And we've seen them uh, this past uh, year increase that through our advocacy efforts. 
folks are wrestling with the questions, even in East King County. And um, I, I, I struggle with generalizations because I think when we get to know each other as individuals, there are a lot of people who care. Mm -hmm. and there are also, as you say, a lot of people who are um, reluctant because you see homelessness increasing so significantly in all of these issues. Are we ever going to solve it? Are we putting money in a black hole? Um, I would say we're making progress, and I want to encourage people to step beside those broad brush um, strokes of this or that and say, what can we do and, and how can we learn together? And what changes we're going to have to make to make it happen? Absolutely. There's no doubt about it. Marty, thank you very much for being with us. Stan, thank you.